Hello, my fellow Dinky Rats. I have not made a Let's Train video, a Let's Talk and Train video in a freaking hot minute. And it's storming again outside. Um, I got my coffee with me, and you know what that means. You know what that means. It always gets me in the mood. That did not sound as intended. But um, whenever it's raining out, whenever there's a thunderstorm and I'm having coffee, I'm like, it's time for me to train and talk to you guys. It's just how it goes. If you guys don't know yet, I am now known for being a TikToker, okay? When people hear about my name now, they no longer think of me as a YouTuber. They think of me as a TikToker. So, you know, I met people at Briarfest and they were like, oh, I love your videos. And now when people are going to meet me, they're going to be like, oh, I love your TikToks. Point is... I went viral with one TikTok and my head got obviously too big, as we can all tell. All jokes aside, I do have a TikTok and if you guys want to follow me there, um, I mean, there's not like a choice. I need to stop like making space for choices here. There's no if you want to or I would like you to. There's only you will follow me on TikTok right now. Do people know I'm joking? Like, am I gonna get freaking like abused verbally in the comments for this behavior? So I don't know which horse I want to train though. What is this rat doing here? What is Poopy doing here? I got this horse and I called it, like the nickname is Poopy. Poopy is in P-O-O-P-Y. So we either have this horse to train or we have the Shire. And we're gonna go with the Shire. This one is level eight and this one is level seven. But I'm kind of tempted to train this horse though. Okay, but I'm not training it. All right, we're gonna hop on this one and um, I have nothing planned out for this video, I just want to talk to you guys, which like, kind of stresses me out to be honest, because I always have something planned out, because I'm a control freak, so I'll just have to wing it. And you know what I realized? That because of YouTube, I've changed as a person, like wow, no way Dennis, no freaking way, of course you did, but like what I mean is that I can talk for like hours. And like, let me explain what I mean, because this is gonna make more sense once I give you a real example. Something that actually happened to me last week. So, I was going back home from the gym, it was like 11 p.m. Um, literally when the gym closes. I think the workers, they're like so sick of me. They're like, get out right now, I wanna go home. Um, but yeah, I was driving back home and I was talking. I was, I was talking in the car and I was comparing the driving style of US with a driving style from Romania because I'm from Romania and I was and I drove in the US um, for like two months almost two months and so I was in the car alone driving and talking as if I was recording a video and I just stopped like while speaking I just stopped and I realized people are hospitalized for this people get themselves checked dude and then I realized that it's not just that one time that I did it, I always talk to myself as if I'm recording a video. And even when I talk to people, like I remember making new friends in the US. And I'm not talking about Briarfest, now I'm talking about the period of time that I was in Pennsylvania. And I just developed this ability to be social. And I think that I am social, but because of YouTube, I can just form conversations and not make the situation be awkward. Even though there is something that happened at Briarfest that made me cringe so bad because um, there was this one um, sweet fan that came up to me and gave me something like they gave me a halter I think for um, a briar horse and because they were cringing they were not cringing they were just like shy and they were feeling uncomfortable because of that I also felt the same way and so the interaction was kind of cringe um, yeah the person gave me the gift and I was like just saying how grateful I am and I'm so thankful and whatever and I just kept going about it because the person would just look at me and not say anything so just picture this they hand me the bridle and I'm like oh thank you so much I really appreciate it you're so kind and I just kept on going and they were like not saying anything they were just looking me straight in the eyes not even like I don't even think they were smiling they were just like looking at me and I was like um and what do I do now so, and I was sitting down with a friend when this happened, and that friend was like, Dennis, you were, I could feel, I could feel the cringeness and the uncomfortableness in your skin and bones when you talk to them. The fan was really nice, they were just shy, but I'm just trying to <laughs> defeat my point here that I'm social and that I can make situations not be awkward when they usually are. Um, 
but yeah, usually I can be pretty social and I can make conversations and entertain conversations, um, especially with new people. Um, because of YouTube, I don't know, I just developed this like very talkative side of me and engaging kind of, which is nice. But um, again, it can be worrisome, like talking to yourself um, at 11 p.m. at night in your own car, being like, yeah, so driving in the US is so much different than driving in, Ro in Romania. Like, I'm just proving a point again. I'm literally talking about things that I do not have planned, that I just go on about them because of YouTube. It just helps me. I just develop this habit of constantly making, um, like talking about certain topics that just come out to my mind and going into detail, but not to the extent where it's just like, Dennis, shut up literally never open your mouth again. I mean, that's pretty bold of me to assume though, because you guys are probably right now like, Dennis, you went on about this for way too long, just change the topics or shut up. I never gave my input on the Pentavians thing, I think I never did. Um, the fact that they were slowed down. I understand why Star Stable wants old horses to be- uh, no, I actually don't. I don't understand why Star Stable wants old horses to be the same speed since there's different breeds and breeds have different speeds in real life, so... Like, let's make the game more realistic, shall we? Um, can you guys hear the wind in my door? Like the wind just blowing outside. There's like a storm coming, dude. Freaking excited. I love storms. Um, yeah, it's like, why does I still want all the horses to be the same speed? Doesn't make any sense. It's not fun. Stop defending Star Steel when it's not necessary. Um, it's just plain stupid that they want all horses to be the same breed. Literally, there's no reason for it to be like that. Um, now, Okay, they want all horses to be the same breed, the fact that they updated the Pentavians and they fixed the bug is a good thing if you think about it, but at the same time, like, don't do that 10 years later, because people have already bought these horses to race, and they've put their hope into them and their money, and now you're like just taking all that away from them, at least give a small refund or something. Bro, the wind is like, going insane. So what is bothersome is the fact that they fixed the bug so later on to the point where people were like, okay, Star Steel is probably never gonna fix them, so I'm just gonna buy them to race. So they did, which is valid, it makes sense. Alright, I had to shut the window because it was way too loud. It probably was probably annoying for you guys. So yeah, the fact that people bought the Pentavians was for racing was valid because yeah, if they're faster and they want to win races and go for it, and there's nothing wrong with about that. But again, if they want all horses to be the same speed, then what they did is somewhat a good thing, but it's not... What is wrong is the way they did it. And the fact that they did it so late, the fact that they did not give these people anything back that bought the horses for um, the speed of them. Because who wants, who would want to ride a crested Pentavian? No one. Literally no one. Um, so it's obvious that people bought them for racing. And I do agree with the fact that the racing community has been very much neglected and overseen, like no one cares from the community about them. I mean, from the Star Stable team. Because I remember when, and I know I say this all the time, but Star Stables reset the high score board so many times for no reason, because, oh, there were cheaters. Okay, well, why can't you prevent cheaters from the game? This is your game and it's a huge horse game. The biggest horse game in the industry, you should be able to have a pretty strong security system and hinder people cheating in your game. So this all comes down to still being incapable of doing certain things, you know, fixing bugs in time, preventing cheaters, because the high score boards, bro, the amount of time I spent to get those good high scores, and they just like wiped it all away in a matter of milliseconds. But yeah, it was frustrating and I stopped racing and racing was like kind of the main reason I would even play this game, to be honest. But um, it's of the past now and I've accepted the fact that they don't care. So then I gotta move on. I received a comment this week of someone being like, you sound dead. And then they replied to your comment like, oh, but you always sound dead. And I'm like, dude, this is my voice. Just stop being a stinker. You know what I mean? And I recall people, I think like a few months ago, people were always commenting, Dennis, you sound so dead. And I'm like, okay, I get it. I actually don't get it. I don't really understand how I sound dead. I just have a very calm tone sometimes and my... The way that I speak is very emotionless sometimes, and that's the way that I am. And I am way more emotionless in person than I am in um, in my videos because I try to be more alive. Um, which probably takes away from my um, 
authenticity and from who I am, so I'm probably gonna stop doing that. Even though I don't feel like I'm faking things when I record videos because I've always hated people that are like, I kid you not, dude, people that like YouTubers that are like exaggerating and they're like so over the top when they record videos. Um, I'm like, you need to calm down because you're not funny, you're not entertaining, you're just irritating. And like, be yourself, dude. Do not, like when you record a video, I receive a lot of DMs of people being like, Dennis, I want to start a YouTube channel, but I don't know how to start, what to do and how to be successful, um, how to get people to watch me. This just came to my mind because I never know how to respond to those questions, but this just came to my mind now. Be yourself and like not in the corny cheese way because I am really tired of the slang. It sounds very cringy and corny, but there is some truth to it. Like be authentic, dude, and be raw because people are so sick and tired of just clones. I am so tired and fed up with people being the same online. Um, just bring something original and be yourself. That's going to change everything. Like the way that you talk to someone in real life, talk to your viewers. The way you talk to your friends in real life, talk to your viewers, dude. Because we all want friends, okay? Like I want to talk to you guys and address. Like even now, I'm being very transparent with you and honest as I would be with a friend. And I feel like that's what I seek in a YouTuber too. And I find comfort in those YouTubers um, because I can commiserate with them in a sense and I can relate to them and I can feel safe because oh, this person is not afraid to show what they think and to be honest and to be transparent and to be real about their experiences, about their thoughts, about what they're going through, about how they feel about certain things. So yeah, main advice do not try to be a clone or be someone else or be, you know, really... Maybe you're like me and you're not as um, fun. I don't consider myself to be a fun person. I think I'm quite boring sometimes. Um, I'm not one to... I'm not a fan of parties at all. I am an extrovert, but I hate going out um, to parties. I like going out and I like being social. I don't like going to parties. And I don't like big groups of people. Even though I'm an extrovert, they just feel very superficial sometimes to me and I'm like I could be more productive at home alone and do something than come here and just, you know, stare at the walls or just make stupid jokes and fit in with the other stupid jokes that are being made. I don't know. It's just that, yeah, people want rawness and honesty because and it's so awesome too, and I really admire this in our generation, that we can see through the BS so clearly. Like when people are trying to like fake things or say things that don't actually mean, like we can see that. Or when someone's trying to be empathetic towards you, but they're like clearly not and it's just fake, we can smell that from a thousand miles. So I just love that about our generation, that we seek and that we want authenticity. We're so tired. We're so fed up with fake things. And that's something I really admire in our generation. And I would lie if I would say that there's not many things that I dislike about our generation, because there for sure are. Um, but there's also good sides to them. And I know that the older generations are always going to be like, oh, the younger generation is so much worse and they're so, they need help. And I feel like we are the same with the next generation, with the ones, with a generation that's younger than us. And I feel like it's always going to be the cycle of the older generation having a hard time understanding the younger generation and labeling them as weird and yeah we are weird and as a generation and because I'm part of Gen Z I think I can say that our generation is in fact weird to a certain extent because we're so different and our humor can be so different sometimes we go too far we make fun of things or we laugh about things that are not funny and we shouldn't laugh about but we have our good sides and we have our bad side for sure too Wow, dude, I was not expecting to go this deep into this. Like, I was like, I'm just gonna turn the camera on and see what I'm gonna word on it. And some good things came out of it, I guess. I do be a very particular rat, and I know that. Like, I'm very selective of everything, even of people in my life. And you guys can see that in the way that I, like, talk about horses and everything. I'm just very selective. And that is with everything. Literally everything. And... Sometimes I feel like I'm really annoying and irritating because of the way that I am like I feel like people think I'm really like posh um, I come off as very stuck up sometimes and It is because sometimes I am like I will lie 
um, if I would say that I'm not, because I can be arrogant and I hate that about myself, but I guess awareness is the first step towards change, right? I guess. I do be prideful sometimes, so it's hard to break that cycle. Yeah, I can't believe I'm still playing this game after seven years, dude. That's freaking insane. Is it seven years or is it more? I think it's seven. I'm just, like, I thought of that just because of how different the arena looks now, and it looks so much smaller than it used to be. Um, I think, I think so. Maybe it was the same size. I don't know, just it looks so different than the way it did when I first joined the game. And that only speaks about how, about how long I've been playing this game for. You know what I realized? I was walking in the center of my town a few days ago, and there's something, like a realization that struck my entire being, like, I got this weird, like, almost goosebumps, like, a shiver went down my spine, and I was like, I'm literally living the dream. I get to do horse stuff, okay, I get to make videos about horses, and I get to make a living out of it, and, well, I'm not making a living out of YouTube, but I am developing two businesses right now that are both related to model horses, and I cannot talk too much about them just yet, because... I think that it's better I don't talk about them, at least about one project that's very underdeveloped because, you know, I don't want to talk about something and then be like, yeah guys, so I change of plans, it's not gonna happen anymore. You know what I mean? That would be pretty unwise of me to like start talking about it if I'm not even sure it's gonna happen. Um, but one of the projects I'm working on and the business I'm working on um, is actually coming to life and the feedback I'm receiving is good. So I'm really excited about it, so happy. and so. I just had this realization, like, I am literally living what five-year-old Dennis would want to live. Like, my younger self would be freaking crying happy tears right now and hugging me. So, I get to make videos of horses, I get to talk about horses with people from the community because I... For the longest time, I just felt very lonely in this hobby. I mean, not the hobby, but like in my horse passion. I've always loved horses and I really didn't know that. I started to rummage all my house um, and look for horse things and see if I've always been passionate about horses and I have been dude I found this piece of paper literally no one young Dennis horse it was the word kal which means horse in Romanian and um, then I found this one horse book and I remembered when I got it I was like really young um, I was at my cousin's birthday party she held her birthday party at mcdonald's i don't know if this is in the us or not or anywhere else but you can hold your birthday party as a child at mcdonald's they prepare a lot of things for you and mcdonald's had this one train um made for birthday parties and i remember at mcdonald's there were two surprise toys you could get and i got the boys toy which was i don't remember what it was i just remember that the girl's toy was a horse book and i remember I was like five years old and I was thinking, why do I not get a horse book just because I'm a boy? Like what is wrong with being a boy and liking horses? Nothing, right? Animals are meant for everyone. And being in the US and seeing so many male figures in the equine industry and having horses made me feel so understood and not alone because dude, like social media is just filled with horse girls and if you're a horse boy people are like oh you're so weird why do you like horses they're for girls like what the heck it's an animal dude it's a freaking animal why are horses for girls but dogs are for everyone for example like just that doesn't make any sense it doesn't make any freaking sense i do not understand anyway so yeah point is that from a very young age i've loved horses and um i didn't know that till recently um after i started rummaging my whole house for horse things and seeing that yeah, I did collect horse things from a, from a very young age, so the passion was always there. So the fact that I can make a living out of this, the fact that I can surround myself with people that love horses just like I do, the fact that I can just talk about horses for hours to other people without feeling annoying, um, that's amazing. I mean, <laughs> I don't have any friends in real life here in Romania that like horses like I do, so I can't really talk to them about horses, I can only talk to my online friends. So you can only imagine how being at Briarfest felt for me. I could talk to real people about these horses and they would be as excited as I was. That was just a dream, dude. But um, yeah, I'm so happy with my life right now. Um, 
I did hit rock bottom recently, but I'm just, I'm not embracing the victim state, you know what I mean? I'm not a victim, I've never been, I'm redeemed, and I'm not going to wallow in that state. Yeah, there's seasons in our lives where we just get freaking tormented, and sometimes people just tremble in your heart like it's nothing. But there's a choice in that. There's a choice of whether or not you want to stay in that state, in that victim state, and just cry about how they've hurt you. Or you can choose to reject that. And dude, I've just, like for the past month, I've felt so free and so at peace. Like, dude, haven't had this much peace in a long time in my life, honestly. So yeah, I'm just enjoying to live life in a new way. Yeah, this was something I was not expecting to go this deep today, but it happened, dude. It was not planned out. If you guys enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe. Please follow me on Instagram and TikTok. And if you want to support me on Patreon, you can. You don't have to, but um, you can. It's just if you want to, alright? Well, I'll see you guys in my next one. Have a good one.